Because they don't submit to God, so they acknowledge God's yeah. existence. So, but so when yeah. Paul says faith, he he doesn't mean faith in God's existence. He means uh, trust in God, trusting His promises, and uh, yeah. you know, but he speaks su submission about to Him and and uh, believe that that uh, that. Uh, Christ died, died, died for your sins, acceptance of this, and mm. uh, desire to follow. But um, like he gives the example of Abraham, uh, and he says Abraham was justified when he believed in God. So when he belie when believed in God and God so, uh, declared him to be righteous. So surely but Abraham was not justified because he believed that God exists. Because uh, no. uh, in the time of Abraham, everyone believed that God exists. But did Abraham uh, believe? But, uh, Abraham believed in God's promises. That's he right. He trusted yeah. God, and this trust is what so did what did Abraham believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus? Did Abraham believe Jesus is Lord? So uh, before Jesus, uh, people didn't have this knowledge because uh, <laughs> it didn't yet happen, and, and God uh, hasn't yet chosen to reveal it. So. Uh, so the Old Testament prophets and uh, people before Jesus were justified on the basis of uh, just Because uh, when in, Paul in, in speaks God. about Abraham, he speaks about Abraham having trust in God, but he says um, Abra if Abraham had, had any reason to boast about his works, um, then they, like he would, he would have reason to boast. But it's not about his works, but it's about his uh, trust in God. But if you go to the book of Genesis, I think it's Genesis chapter 26. Um, God actually says that it's because you obeyed me, because you kept my commandments and my stature, is why God is blessing Abraham, because of his obedience to God's law. Whereas uh, Paul is saying you're saved without the law. But Abraham is saved by so, submitting uh, to God and so obeying God. So if I remember correctly, uh, God uh, blesses Abraham multiple times, and He already yeah. blesses him before uh, before the works of the law have been done by him. So he he faith, la I mean, the first commandment that God gives to Abraham is to leave his country. Uh, so he submits and he leaves. So God, you know, God makes more promises and blesses to him. And towards the end of Abraham's life, God says, because you obeyed me, kept my commandments, um, I, you know, I will bless you. Uh, but Paul, Paul is saying that Abraham wasn't blessed because of his obedience or because of his works, but because he trusted in God rather than... But Abraham did actually obey God. Like when God told him to do something, Abraham did that. Yeah, because um, that's, that's the consequence of faith even. I mean, it's, it's a major point of, of Paul uh, yeah. that uh, genuine faith is submission to God and uh, you know, obedience must follow faith. But, um, like in, that, that's yeah. what faith is, in essence. The, uh, uh, I mean, James says that Abraham was justified by his works and his faith was made complete. Whereas Paul says, in, I think it's Galatians, or Romans are that Abraham was justified by his faith apart from his works. So these are two opposite statements. Yeah, so uh, I'd have to check uh, what, what works exactly they use, but uh, um, again, it's, it's, it's the same just... word um, from what I remember when I was checking. Um, but uh, I'll just come back to what I said about the meaning of faith in James versus in Paul, because as I said, James by faith means... Uh, Sorry, that wasn't exists. Abraham our father justified by works? So which verse is that? Uh, uh, two, so uh, 221. Um, and by the way, I'm not trying to trap you or anything like that. Um, just having an honest dialogue. Um, if you compare that with Romans chapter 4 verse 2. Uh, Paul says um, Abraham was justified by his faith and not by his works or apart from works. Do you have Romans 4? Does someone have a Bible on them? Or bring it up here. Uh, uh, Romans 4 2? Sorry.
And also if you look at this... Oh, okay, sorry, yeah. So this is Romans chapter 4, verse 2. I mean, I'm just looking at that Greek. Oh, okay, sure. It's the same Greek words they both use. So, I think, they, uh, so James says, uh, Abraham, the father of us, was not by works he justified, having offered Isaac the son of him upon the altar. Keep it holding, uh, we need it. Was, Can I need so, your internet? Yeah, we'll take you. Oh, yeah. Well, Paul just say that this uh, offering of Isaac upon the altar was the act of faith, was the, uh, you know, what, what was the, yeah, the act of faith, uh, and therefore, to hold this, it, it uh, is his faith. Uh, um, it's okay. It is his faith that's displayed in the willingness to sacrifice his son. That's. Uh, that has that has justified him. So I feel like with respect like Paul's misquoting the Old Testament. So the Old Testament is teaching that Abraham is justified or saved by both faith and works. Whereas Paul seems to say the opposite, like Galatians 3 6 and Romans 4 3 22. So maybe if we look up those verses, very common. Um, anyway, Ijaz is calling you, so give give him my slums. Right, right, right. Um, Um, i show you the other verse I wanted to show you about Abraham because you know both Muslims and Christians and Jews uh, we will respect Abraham and we look towards him as being um, I mean, the, the same, father of faith Abraham and example is different in Islam, isn't he? So he claimed that he went to Mecca, established a mosque there Would you like to go to Mecca? <laughs> One, would you like to visit Mecca yourself? Yeah. <laughs> well, you never know. Um, in Genesis chapter 26, uh, verse 4, God says to Abraham, Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my status and my laws, so it's because of these reasons um, I will multiply your offsprings as stars of the heavens. Yeah, but, so but Genesis also says in uh, chapter 15, verse 6, Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. So he credited it, what? Belief. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they both come to two different conclusions. So, so James says... I, mean, Abraham. I wouldn't say that, this conclusion, <laughs> that these conclusions are contradictory because faith is, is uh, what is the source of justification and then as your, uh, so as your faith is works, genuine by works works without faith is dead justification continues um, yeah. and so likewise faith without works is also dead as well so they go together like James yeah, says we're justified by our works and not by faith alone James says that in James 2.24 we're justified by our works and not by faith alone but again by faith, James <laughs> means uh, belief that God exists. And trusting so in, in Him sense, and submitting. No, so in this sense, in, in the sense of uh, faith as defined by James, uh, Satan has faith because he believes God exists. Yeah. But it's not faith as... But I think it's a different word the there. Fault. No, it's, it's the same fault. It's the, uh, same, the same, same Greek word. Oh, okay. No, sorry, not Philos. Okay, I'll uh, have to check. But uh, they're just using the same word in, in, in two different senses. senses and I this see. This is the... Because if you, if you look at that... By the way, I hope I'm not keeping you. If you need to go, just let yes. me know. Um, if you look at uh, in Jerusalem, in the Council of Jerusalem, um, that James says to Paul that as for Gentile believers, they should abstain from food sacrificed to an idol and from dead meat and from blood and from sexual immorality 
um, I think there's something else, but I can't remember. Uh, but one of the key ones is not to eat food that has been sacrificed to an idol. But Paul, uh, in his letters, he never quotes these four, four rules. Uh, but in the Quran, in chapter 5, verse number 3, uh, these food laws are mentioned in the Quran that like Muslims are prohibited to eat meat that has been offered to you know, any other god besides the god of Abraham. Um, and Paul, but Paul says in his letter to one in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 um, that it doesn't matter whether you eat food that has been sacrificed to an idol or not. It doesn't make you any more closer to God or not, whether you do it or you don't. Um, yeah, so, so there was debate about uh, dietary loss in early Christianity, whether well, they had to be followed or not. This is a conflict, that's what he's trying to portray to you. Between James yeah, and so Paul. There, so there is tension and some disagreement between, between Paul and, and the Jerusalem church, but uh, ultimately they, they uh, agreed on the gospel message and they sort of shook if hands you and look at this fundamental law, that's the mm. point he's making. Well, it's not a fundamental law, that's the point. Is it a fundamental law? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still, I mean, one is to do with I mean, salvation. Islam, it might be uh, fundamental, no, but even Christianity, but this point doesn't he, have... The point he's saying... Did, uh, did Abraham, for example, eat meat that has been sacrificed to an idol? Probably not. So, so these are like uh, models or examples that are meant to be followed. In the book of Hebrews, it says that Abraham is but, but a model not of faith, exactly. or not, not something like that. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that, that is the point. So Abraham's a model of faith, so is Moses and Jesus. And Jesus also never ate any food that was sacrificed to an idol as well. But Paul says all foods are now clean. Yeah, because, like in Romans because chapter 14. As, long as you don't uh, actively worship the idols, just you know, you get that meat because you cannot get anything else. That, that doesn't matter because it's uh, it's what's but this within the heart that matters, this not what this, comes inside. But this is reference to yeah. eating. Not it's not a matter of the heart. It's a specific prohibition of no, but my abstaining point, from those foods. My point is that this is uh, this is this has been a debate that has not been essential to salvation through Christ. And you know the at book one of point, Revelation. At one point, the church declared that uh, Gentiles should abstain from food sacrifice to idols. Yeah. But uh, and from blood but and from dead the church from changing their mind. Well, in Revelation, you know, Re the book of Revelation in chapter two says when Jesus comes back. He will punish those that ate meat or food that was sacrificed to an idol. So it is a big deal. I mean, that, that's, at least in Revelation. That's in, the, that's so. in so a what, specific context. So what, repeat that again once more loudly. So you know, in Revelation chapter two, it says when Jesus comes back, he will punish those people who ate food sacrificed to an idol. I think it's a, it's in a specific context where uh, that has to do with the worship of the beast. At the, in the end, in the end times. But if it, if you if it's if you just follow Paul's uh, principle, which is that it doesn't matter, like you know, as long as you don't believe the beast is, um, as long as you don't believe in the beast, you can still eat food. Then according to Paul, it's fine. Uh, but according to James or to uh, Abraham um, and even Revelation, um, it's not correct. Like you should abstain if you're a believer. So they said circumcision, as for Gentile believers, they don't have to be circumcised, but they should abstain from like sexual immorality, for example. That's, that doesn't change. Um, so if that doesn't change, then why is it different for food laws? It's a very good point. I don't, I don't think it's a good point because, as I said, it's peripheral to the, to the um, source of salvation, right? So. Uh, it's a matter of practice, whether you know you said the, the uh, sorry, the sorry. Kind of or not, I mean, Christians eat uh, eat animals with uh, blood in them. Yeah, or uh, dead dead meat. Um, you know, you said um, that the disciples and Paul had the same message, but Paul says in Galatians that uh, Peter, like he opposed Peter because he was, do, he was acting a hypocrite, he was acting in opposition to the gospel. And sometimes Paul referred to the gospel as my gospel, like in Romans chapter 16. So Paul had a different gospel to Peter, for example, in Antioch. 
because he said Peter was, wasn't acting in accordance to the gospel, which, which he referred to as my gospel in more than one, on more than, more than one occasion. I think you are kind of grasping at, at straws. So, so, why, why is that so, true? So, 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 so true that why is that explanation grasping at straws for? Why? He's explained to you how Peter is expressly stating that Paul has another gospel. So how is it different? How, I mean, you need to explain. Peter, Peter is, stated that Paul has another gospel. No, yeah. no, Paul, Paul says that Peter is acting um, like not in accordance with, with, the gospel. with the gospel. So yeah, I, I think that, that Peter in Galatians. Made, uh, erred in his judgment when uh, he but was if Peter, hypocritically yeah, so, yeah. Uh, urging so, Gentiles so to then why did Barnabas, that, didn't, that didn't fully follow himself. So, so then why, why did Barnabas side with Peter and uh, not with Paul? And why did the church as a whole side with Peter instead of Paul? If Paul was right, then they should have, you know, side with Paul and said that you're right, Peter isn't acting I mean, according to the gospel you, you and so on. You are kind of introducing a false dichotomy here. How? Uh, because, uh, like, so the behavior of Peter, which might have been hypocritical, is one thing. And mm -hmm. that was, you know, not a good witness to to uh, the Gentiles within the church, uh, while the, the question of dietary laws, uh, the, whether they should be followed is another thing. I mean, Paul says he led Barnabas astray. Peter led Barnabas astray, and you also led the church as a whole in Antioch so astray. Barnabas was a Gentile Christian, right? No, he was Jewish. Jewish. He wasn't one of the disciples, the original disciples, but he was a Christian before Paul, and he introduced Paul to the other Christians when Paul became a Christian in the book of Acts. Uh, but Paul says in Galatians that Peter led the church in Antioch astray along with Barnabas. But here Paul speaking from his perspective. But according to them, Paul is the one who's, you know, astray. Or otherwise they would have sided with Paul. I mean, he didn't, he didn't mean that, that they abandoned uh, the, the saving faith in Jesus. He, he probably meant that he said the gospel. Uh, they, they abandoned they the gospel. They the Gentiles to obey the law of Moses or some uh, well, Paul says of the law of Moses that were not to be applied to Gentiles and therefore mm -hmm. they, they introduced some essential uh, like requirement. So, so supposedly essential uh, laws that Gentiles should follow, but uh, Paul's point is that they were not justified in this, and therefore they mm. had, uh, you know, they, they tried to introduce a different sort of justification into the gospel. Uh, I mean, Paul speaking from his perspective, uh, but if Paul was right, then the others would have agreed with Paul, but it seems that Paul was in the minority which is why Paul probably was booted out of Antioch. And then later on, these other missionaries go to Galatia and they preach a different gospel to Paul. And so Paul hears about it. And then Paul says, who has bewitched you and bewildered you? And then he recollects the story about Peter and him having an argument. And so he gives his side or his version of the story. Uh, but it seems unlikely that Paul... I mean, the, the point um, is that, uh, that Paul says that following all the Mosaic law is not necessary for Gentiles because, they yeah. are, because all nations are saved through Christ, while the Mosaic law is only for the nation of Israel. Yeah. Uh, so, but the uh, disciples... Peter uh, yeah. so and so other it, disciples yeah. attempted to you know, spread the Mosaic law and... Uh, yeah. And, um, uh, and so try to, yeah. to urge uh, all the Gentiles to follow the Mosaic law. But, but, but doesn't that mean that the disciples had a different gospel to Paul? Like so they, they, they taught another religion, had another religion Precisely. basically. They yeah. made it stringent upon everybody following the law. Because the, the, their religion wasn't a new religion. It was a continuation of Moses. Uh, but Paul is the one with a new religion. He's saying we no longer follow the... Continuation of Moses or obey. Just, uh, even according to Moses, that his law is not for all nations, it's uh, just for Israel, right? Well, so, the Israel is referred so to as the beacon of light in and, and a nation of priests. Believing in and worshipping Yahweh, the God, the God of Israel. Objection? But he said Israel is referred to as a beacon of light. A yeah. nation, nation of priests, 
So that means they have knowledge yeah, so of that's, God, so that's the knowledge why of God. They have the specific law that they have to follow, so they are set apart from other nations. Were well, they meant to be an example for other nations as yeah, to but what? Yeah, this doesn't mean that God other is. nations have to follow the law of Moses. Even Judaism today clearly believes that that uh, that uh, the Judaism is for Israel, while other nations can be justly judged by God according to. Uh, according to uh, different laws. So Those are the, yeah. So they refer to the Nohai laws. So the law, um, not to eat meat that has been sacrificed to an idol, or from dead animal, or from blood. So these Nohai laws is what the you know, Jews say that Gentiles can follow. Um, so that's what the disciples are saying for Gentiles. They don't need to be circumcised in order to be Christian, but they should abstain from these things. Um, so, but Paul is saying it is fine, uh, just as long as you don't offend your brother or so etc. This kind he's of he's stuff. Like but, washy, yeah. wishy washy type of yeah. new introduction that he's giving for the Gentiles. That's why the church go against him. You see, this is why you know uh, Barnabas leaves him. Why did he side like the Psalm said? Why uh, did they side with Peter? I, and why did they, why did um, Barnabas side with the church they, and went up against him then? But because they, they reconciled and agreed that uh, that uh, that both they reconciled and agreed that uh, they can cooperate in the in the spread of the gospel. Peter will be sent to the Jews and try to call the Jews to Christ. And when Jews are called to Christ, they don't have to uh, abandon the Mosaic law. They should probably still follow it. So, you know, it makes sense for Peter to emphasize the need to follow it. While uh, Paul was sent to Gentiles, and because Gentiles are not within the nation of Israel, they don't have to follow the Mosaic so why law. Then, why they just then, have to believe in Christ. So why then would the agent of Peter uh, and, the, and the church go out to Galatia and rebuke the Galatians who are following another gospel which Paul is preaching. So Paul responds by saying, who has bewitched you, O oh, foolish Galatians, Be because, because I preach to you because the, the Gentiles were having, were having been called to follow the Mosaic law, which uh, is not necessary uh, for nations outside of Israel due to... Uh, but where does he state that? Where, does, but where, where, did the, where, where is the agreement given between the church and Paul whereby they agree that you can spread a message in which they, don't, they do not have to follow the Jewish obligation. Where do you find that? Where do they give it? Okay, we've given, you can freely do as you, you can preach and proselyze as you preach and um, exclude our fundamental laws. Where do they give him the authority to do so? That's why he comes into conflict with the church. Is that correct? You, you, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just thinking of other examples. Even Jesus in Matthew, says um, if you want to be saved or if you want to have eternal life obey keep the commandments of God Matthew 517 uh, Matthew 19 so your favorite one Matthew 1917 okay. <laughs> yeah but in Matthew 517 because I have not come oh, to change yeah, the law yeah. I've come not to abolish yeah because yeah. the law is still there it's for Israel but where does it okay uh, other nations yeah, but where but by then by definition the, where does where is who by whose authority is Paul allowed to uh, proselytize uh, to, to the non-Christians, non uh, allowing them these acts, um, trying to harmonize the relationship between people? So by whose authority is he allowing this? And then, so I'm, I'm, uh, one second, and then who why ratifies is he describing the that authority? Like the so apostle? Are you following why what I'm saying to you? So, for example, yeah. what I'm oh, asking yeah. you basically yeah, is that yeah. the disciples are okay with it, <laughs> and they say, okay, go and preach how you want, and we will give you authority to exclude some of the laws. Because that's your argument in essence your argument is that the nation of Israel only they were supposed to um, have have the law however your argument then is to the Gentiles this this was excluded on the behest of Paul but upon whose authority is Paul being given this authority to do so so uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to find the, the specific passage in the New Testament which describes the meeting between 
Paul and, uh, um, and uh, the other apostles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you, you know, um, in Galatians, um, Paul says what the disciples were doesn't make any difference to him. Um, he says like they added nothing to my message. So he says he re he did. He received his gospel from Jesus, yeah. and that he wasn't taught by any of the apostles before yeah, him. Yeah, correct. Because uh, yeah, indeed, he he. So Jesus appeared to Paul uh, after after his death, but, and so, resurrection, and uh, so he instructed Paul directly. So you know, like in Islam, if you want to learn about Islam, the Muslims go to the first generation of Muslims. That like we go to the companions of the Prophet, those people who knew. Prophet Muhammad. Um, so likewise, yeah, the hadiths and so on. But uh, yeah. according to professional historians, so you have, there are serious doubts about. Well, like Muslim you have, a, yeah, yeah. Um, you have hadith of Jesus as well. But if you exist in the time of Jesus, uh, you would go to the disciples of Jesus. You wouldn't go to a new person, a new man who's claiming to have revelation. But instead, you would go to those people who met Jesus and who were with him and were directly taught by him. So, but Paul says about them. Um, even though they're regarded or seen as pillars, uh, what they are to, for him, it makes no difference. Like he says, they added nothing to my message. So, so Paul, was, Paul was a new man. Yeah. He, he was a new man on the scene, new, but they were already a yeah, kid, kid on the block. A new kid on the block who himself, I think they were famous in Poland as well. Yeah, a time. new kid on the block who's come <laughs> along, forget about, you know, you guys who spent all your time with Jesus. I've just seen him in a vision, apparently. And I am now the main man, and you guys are irrelevant. You don't, you're adding nothing to me. That's not quite what he said. What is it? There so, enough? What he said? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, yeah okay, he's paraphrasing, second. but yeah. yeah it's a paraphrase. But it's in that? Galatians chapter uh, two. What is it? You're twisting it a bit. I don't believe. I'm just elaborating. What does he say exactly? Uh, no, I need to then. I have to, I have to just, look it up yeah, because. I just elaborated um, upon the point. Let's see if I'm twisting it. Just bring, bring it up, please. Um. Just wait. Just wait. Let it. This is important. Thank you. Oh. There's a lot of cameras. Yeah, yeah you're going to be famous, but you're used to that. You're in the biggest corner, so you should have no issue. Actually, I kind of do have an issue because you always have these silly titles to guys, videos. Guys, put good titles so it will be out authenticated and rubber stamped by Yakub that he's happy with the title. Anyway, continue. Yeah, do you want to, it's like verse, um, so like verse 5. To them we didn't yield in submission even for a moment so that the truth of the gospel uh, might be preserved for you and for those who seem to be influential what they, were make, what they were make no difference to me God shows no partiality There you go uh, no. Those I say who seem influential added nothing to me on the contrary what they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised just as Peter was entrusted to the gospel with the circumcision and so on. And when James, Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived um, <laughs> and so on. Yeah. Imagine, he's telling the very disciples who spent all their time with Jesus. You're speaking to you, the camera or speaking to me? And to you as well. Okay. That's fair enough, good point. That's fair enough. Yeah, because so, that's the problem with Yeah, that's fine. But what I'm saying to you, yeah, notice no. that last point that he just read, that Nazam just cited. That he's just condescendingly saying, what's the last bit? He seemed to be... What is I it? don't see, just one I don't second, see the condescendingly. Where it says... Um, uh, for those... Um, where it says he and, seemed... And when James, Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars perceived... Imagine uh, that. He's telling those very people who are the fundamental, close associates of Jesus, that you just seem to be a pillar. It's condescending. I don't think it's condescending. But, but, so, for example... He's he just stating his they, perception. Yes, which is a condes cond condescending the people. Imagine, I so. imagine you are in the... In the in, Where he kind of dis distanced himself because they are perceived as pillars. So he's not saying he himself 
regards them as pillars. But 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 technically they are more so, qualified. There are actually pillars because yes. they, they were with Jesus. They met yeah, Jesus. So they are as but pillars. Paul Paul is they a new man. In the community as, as, uh, no, but he's you know, the one who's saying that he, by him saying it seems like they have been perceived. So he's actually he's casting doubt upon their legitimacy. I don't think you should be reading it. I think that's. Pro do you think I've been? Uh, it's an interpretation. Yeah. Yes. But do you think it's valid? Anyway, it's a valid let, interpretation. Let me, it's possible. Add, yeah. Uh, well, it seems me, clear. Yeah. That let he seems add, like he's. Uh, yeah, the he's passage from the Book of Acts that speaks about the relationship between Paul and um, and the other apostles. When we arrived at Jerusalem, the brothers and sisters received us warmly. The next day, Paul and the rest of us went to see James, and all the, other, all the elders were present. Paul greeted them and reported in detail what God had done among Gentiles through his ministry. When they heard this, they praised God. Then they said to Paul, You see, brother, how many thousands of, thousands of Jews have believed, and all of them are zealous for the Lord. They have been informed that you teach all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses. He did not. Telling them not so to why they their of that, children so or why, so a second, to our but why are they accusing him of that then? They have been slightly misinformed. What shall we do? They will certainly hear that you have come, so do what we tell you. There are four men with us who, who have made a vow. Take these men during in their purification rites and pay their expenses so that they can have their heads shaved. Then everyone will know that there is no truth in these reports about you but that you yourself are living in obedience to the law. As for the Gentile believers, we have written to them our decision that they should abstain from food sacrifice to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. Uh, yeah, so... So, so Paul was so actually... There was, there was uh, amicable um, mm. relationship between well, Paul I'm, and the disciples. In Galatians, Paul says we're no longer under the law, but we're under Christ. So Paul was actually teaching Jews um, that we're no longer under Moses, he but says we're under. That uh, if you are uh, if you are uncircumcised, you should remain uncircumcised. Yeah. But if you are circumcised, meaning if you follow uh, the law of Moses, you should yeah. keep following the law of Moses. Why, why it doesn't so, say quite. So that, but, nowhere uh, does he teach that that the Jews he, should abandon. He the says law of Moses. it doesn't matter whether you're circumcised yeah. or not. What matters is uh, obeying God's commandments, but then it, God does command to circumcise yeah, your children. Um, well, it says anyone who's not circumcised uh, shall be cut off, you know, from, from the their covenant. No, from the mark no, of the covenant. There was no Israel actually. Yeah, from, the, from the mark of the mosaic covenant. Uh, the, 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 there was no Israel. Are not under uh, the mosaic covenant. They're under the covenant of Jesus. But when God God said this to Abraham, Israel hadn't yet come into existence. Yeah. It was only Isaac and Ishmael, and Abraham circumcised is like. Uh, both of them, Isaac and Ishmael. Well, Isaac, so, so Isaac was, wasn't born yet. So this was um, the, I don't think Isaac was born yet. That God but Ish Ishmael, with yeah. And all his descendants, yeah. which are the nation of Israel. And as it, it those included of them, Israel, but yeah. And also the Ish Ishmaelites. The circumcision and so on. They, they are under the covenant of Christ. There is now, abrogation those, in the Old Testament and New Testament as well. I mean, um, it's not, it's not but even in, in Genesis, about right? um, so yeah. again, mm. even Jews in Judaism believe that those outside, outside mm. of Israel, yeah. outside of Judaism, the, the Gentiles, have to basically, yeah, the law of Moses, don't the, have to follow the Talmud. So, so some say that you still follow the, as long as they obey the no high laws, yeah, no high laws yeah, then high. They, yeah. they will be saved. Uh, so that's what the disciples say that the, the Gentile believers should follow the no high laws. Um, but yeah, Paul like says in Christianity, uh, yeah. the contradicts. particular no high laws are, uh, you know, n not that prominent. So uh, the Christians are not partial to no high laws, rather. The, the laws of Christ, you know, the Sermon of the, of, on the Mount, uh, love your brother as yourself. Yeah. 
anyway, uh, it should be going. So, so maybe we should wrap up. One more thing. When you when you quote from the book of Acts to demonstrate that there's a harmonization that's going on between uh, Peter, James and, and Paul, right? What about the first hand accounts from, from Paul? Does he see does he see it as though he's trying to seek harmonization with with Peter and, 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 and the disciples of Jesus? So can repeat? Okay. The book of Acts that you quoted from, you're trying to demonstrate there's a harmonization that's going on, right? Between Paul and the disciples of Jesus, yeah? At the Jerusalem Council. When you go into the first hand accounts from Paul, Especially from the uh, from the from his letters to Galatians, yeah, yeah. does he speak sure, yeah, in that manner? Is he, is he trying to harmonize with the disciples of Jesus? If you read Galatians, he's completely opposing the disciples. So I he's would not completely I, opposing them. He, he's, so he's, he's, he's speaking one, from different perspective and emphasizing different things. But, but these two accounts. But here's what I'm submitting here. Are not Why are we ignoring for the first-hand account of Paul what he has to say about his experience? The Jewish I'm not ignoring, ignoring that. Okay, then can you read from the Galatians? Then? I mean, we already read from Galatians. I don't think it contradicts what... what, what how does Paul describe the disciples? Uh, pillars or uh, so perceived pillars. So no, so-called. Yeah. So-called so -called pillars of the church. I mean, he, he's not saying that in order to deny the, that there are pillars. He admits that there are pillars and he... Uh, so why does he say so-called? So-called, why does he say that? I mean, I would have to look at the Greek. Which verse is that again? Uh, uh, I chap was, chapter 2, I uh, yeah. think verse 6 maybe. Yeah. Uh, verse what? Um, makes no idea. Okay, so it's not, it's verse, um, it's like, it's, okay. it's, okay. The shoes, yeah? Verse, verse 9. Have you read James Dunn, The Evidence for Jesus? James Dunn's book, The Evidence. I like James Turbo's book. Oh, okay, yeah, he's, yeah. Smashed it. Unfortunately, it's a Zionist as well. Yeah. That's the only thing, but yeah. But we take his credentials. James Dunn, The Evidence of Jesus, has got a chapter. Oh, yeah. On, and that's very good as so well. Yeah, actually, I think that, the, uh, that uh, there are different translations. So, uh, the New International Version says, uh, James, Cephas and John, those is esteemed as pillars. Which verse is it? Where is it? Nine. nine. Two, two nine. And the... Of the, the, the Galatians. Word, the word... Um, <laughs> The word translated as uh, esteem, uh, the root is dokao. Mm. James Tabo already that tackles that. The Greek he's, a, he's an expert in early it's Christianity. It's uh, to have an opinion to seem, yeah. properly suppose, yeah. what seems to be forming an opinion. Yeah, exactly. Personal judgment estimate. Yeah, it's trying to make it palatable, but the it, reality uh, is... It doesn't, it doesn't he's, he's necessarily... He's opposing the disciples of Jesus. It doesn't necessarily... Um, convey uh, co convey uh, the, the meaning of a false opinion, right? So, so why was he summoned it, to it's the just, uh, it's just stating the fact that yeah. there was this opinion of them as pillars, but it doesn't what? challenge uh, Wait, hang on, opinion. opinion. So it's not objective that the disciples are the pillars of the of the church? He doesn't so say whether it's objective or not. He just says that just said there it. is an opinion that they are... Opinion? Pillars. According to who? Whose opinion? Uh, opinion of the church. Opinion probably. of the church, that they're the... Who's, who told you that? Who told you that? Who told you it's, a, it's an opinion that disciples of Jesus are pillars of church? It's objective. They sat, they ate, they met Jesus, they yeah, know the gospel. Yeah. According to Paul, not according to the uh, Paul, Paul, disciples. Paul says that uh, that uh, they are esteemed as, as pillars. They uh, that uh, you know people within the church consider them as pillars. When, who, he who, doesn't. He doesn't who, say who, one way or the other Jesus, whether they Jesus, are pillars. Jesus appointed the twelve disciples, the twelve apostles, and the seventy-two other disciples to preach the gospel. Right. Yeah. Right. So he also appointed cares? Paul. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter what Paul is saying about disciples. Jesus himself is saying, the one who's going to carry my Kirk, message. I mean, uh, one second. Your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is telling you very clearly. The one who's going to carry my message, the one who's going to propagate my gospel, is not Paul, is the disciples. 
Okay, so when but Paul, Paul is saying, a Paul is not a disciple. Paul is a yes, disciple is. according to you. Yeah. He's self-professed. Yes, yes. Self-professed disciple. Self-professed disciple. He, yes, he is also right. confirmed by the twelve. By the way, he considers himself to the thirteenth. Who appoint him as the thirteenth disciple? Thirteenth apostle. Where does he consider himself? As it's, in, it's in his letters. Literally, as the thirteenth. He, he calls himself an apostle. apostle. He calls apostle. himself he calls an apostle. apostle. I suppose like like he is an apostle, but he calls himself he literally says, the I thirteenth. He says, "I suppose." Oh, oh, that I don't know, but yeah. He says, "I, I suppose yeah. I'm an apostle." So yeah, when because he is like. Yeah. Even today, people who preach the gospel are apostles. So when Paul is when Paul is saying the according to your translation, what did you say again? Instead of so called, opinionated. Is that what you're saying? So to have esteemed. an opinion to see. Opinion. What do you use opinion? That they are esteemed. So Paul says that uh, that uh, there is an opinion of uh, that uh, that uh, James, uh, Peter, and John are uh, the pillars. Of the, ch of, of the of church. the church, yeah. they're seen as it's so the church has been has, this, has, has been esteemed the, by who? Sort of lay, lay who sees it that way? The, the church. The lay members of the church. Yeah, but who? Opinion. I guess Barnabas and yeah, but they're the others. Barnabas, no, technically. No, no, not Barnabas, sorry. I already I'm said talking the, about, the, about, the broad talking church, about the, the talking lay about people of the church. Hmm? The broad church, the lay people. Okay, so are you saying there's a difference of opinion then? Whether they no. consider to be the pillars of the church? I am no less than the... No, well, what is the point? Okay, so at the Jerusalem I think Council... It's the same. Who was there at the Jerusalem uh, two, six. Council? It's the disciples of Jesus, two, right? Six. Aramaic Palestinian Jews. Who, I'm not, who, who I'm sat not entirely sure who exactly was there. Yeah, it was his disciples, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, but who, but who yeah, exactly James, are his James, disciples? James, John, Peter... Yeah, they were there. Yeah, so they were the disciples. So. Why do you think Paul is saying uh, so-called pillars of the church? He, he's not saying so-called. He's saying people have an opinion a, of them as pillars. Maybe it's the next verse. Which is, which is a correct opinion. Yeah, we really look at the context. So it's not objective. When it is, say, a, when it is opinion, an objective truth. So it's not opinion, it's objective. It is also an opinion. No, opinion is opposite to objective. No, it's not opposite. Opinion like, means subjective, one has, one, my friend. One can have an opinion about something, then it's not, and, then it's not objective. and then simultaneously it is also an objective truth. No? Yes. Subjective is opinion. If you check it up might the dictionary, be. check up the Oxford dictionary. Subjective basic opinions. But if I have an opinion, so that I want to know who is where does he get? If, the, I, if where I have does, an opinion yeah, that, yeah. so where does know, Paul, where, uh, where does Paul Hitler get, was yeah. a yeah. evil gen genocide maniac? So are you are you saying this is also objectively yeah. true? So right? are you saying the Jerusalem so Council simultaneously they an opinion yeah. can be subjective and also it's not objectively true? Objectively yeah, that's and yeah. subjective at the same time. Yes. <coughs> What did he just say, by the way? Sorry, I, I just think you're disingenuous. I mean, oh, oh, there are some objective facts in the world, and there are differences of, of opinion about these objective facts. See, look at what he says. Peter, here. James, and, uh, and uh, that's what I have John to, that's what were I have to hear, so. objectively that's what pillars what because into, God look what Paul established says, them look what Paul says says into, into, because like God finish. established them as pillars, and also they are seen as pillars. Okay. And God, these no. two things are not contradictory. Right? I so can you... see someone as legitimate president and also he's objectively the president. So, okay. so that in, two, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 11, he says, I have been a fool. You forced me to it, for I ought to have been commended to you by you, for I was not at all inferior to these super apostles, Thank you. even though I am nothing. Very clear. Very clear. clear cut. Where what? is this from? Sorry. That's in 2 Corinthians so what chapter about it? 12, verse 11. Oh, what, what do you make it? of that? Yeah. Do you want to read it again, just for the sake of the audience? Yeah. Can you read it? Oh, read it oh, you need more cameras, boys? You. Read it loudly so they can hear you. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. I have been a fool, Paul says. You forced me to it, for I ought to have been commended by you, for I was not at all inferior to the super apostles, even though I am nothing. 
Yes, so what about it? So who are the super apostles in your understanding? Yeah, presumably the original 12. Yeah, so, so he's saying, so, Paul so is saying, saying that, I'm, that, I'm uh, equal to them, that basically. Is, that he himself or not inferior. taught by Jesus as well. Yeah. So he's not inferior to them. He, he was taught by Jesus. Excuse me, he was taught message. by Jesus. So why is it, in, is it Acts 22, 17, where he says, when um, he comes to Jerusalem, and he says to the voice, let's go to the disciples, to the apostles. And the voice says to him, laughingly, don't go to them. They won't so believe you. Sorry, who says? In the book Acts. of Acts 22, 17. Let me show it to you as well. Why is Paul, who is an authority supposedly, saying that when he wants to prove to the disciples that he is indeed sent amongst them and the, the voice of the Lord is speaking to him. So when the opportunity arises for him to go to the disciples and Ananias, why does he say, don't go to them? The voice said, don't go to them. They won't believe you. Is that in Acts 22? Yes, Acts 22, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. After I had returned to Jerusalem and while I was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance. And I saw Jesus. No, so he's he's not saying these people will not accept uh, you know, the the gospel of Hebrews. He says the people here will not accept your testimony, your testimony about me, exactly. meaning um, meaning that um, meaning that uh, they will not accept that Paul converted and so. Jesus on the road to Damascus and so on. No, he's speaking to the voice and he's saying, and he's telling the voice, after I had returned to Jerusalem and while I was praying in the temple, I fell into it and saw Jesus saying to me, hurry and get out of Jerusalem quickly because they will not accept your testimony about me. They should have the same Holy Spirit. Exactly. Like it's the one Holy Spirit that is speaking to them. So the Holy Spirit Wait, should no, no. tell and them. If that, and and one, second, one, second, one second, one second. And just in addition to that point he's made, that the, the Holy Spirit should be speaking to all of them in unison. Why is it in Acts chapter 19 verse 3 that he says to um, the uh, disciples when he comes to a certain area, has the Holy Spirit come to you? And they say to him, we don't even know what the Holy Spirit is. What let are you talking me, about? Let me Where read is that? Acts chapter 19, verses 1 to 3. So, Acts uh, 22. Uh, Bro, I've got you, Master Lai. I've never done Maghrib. Do you want to hold on to that? Let me pray my Maghrib. Uh, he's just going to pray. So. so, this is Paul speaking to Jews. Not to Christians, but broadly to Jews, right? He begins with brothers and fathers listening out to my defense. Then Paul said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus in Cilicia. I studied under Gamaliel and thoroughly trained in the law of our ancestors. So he emphasizes his learning in the law of Moses. And so on and so on. And he recounts how he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Uh, and he, he recounts uh, how he asked, What shall I do, Lord? I asked. Get up, the Lord said, and go into Damascus. There you will be told all that you have been assigned to do. My companions led me by the hand into Damascus because the brilliance of the light had blinded me and so on and so on. When I returned to Jerusalem and was praying at the temple, I fell into a trance and saw the Lord speaking to me. Quick, he said, leave Jerusalem immediately because the people here will not accept your testimony about me. Which people? Well, the Jews. Uh, Paul had to leave Jerusalem because at this time it was not an opportune moment for him to Preach the, preach the gospel in Jerusalem to Jews, he was instead sent by Jesus to Gentiles. Uh, so, he says, he continues, Lord, I replied, these people know that I went from one synagogue to another to imprison and beat those who believe in you. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen, Stephen was shed, I stood there giving my approval and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. 
Then the Lord said to me, go, I will send you far away to the Gentiles. So, you know, Paul's doors in Jerusalem were kind of closed at this point because Christians were probably fearful of him. They knew that Paul used to mm -hmm. imprison them. Yeah. Why would they invite Paul into their homes if they know this about Paul? But they... wouldn't the Holy Spirit have told them that Paul's no longer a threat and that he's now a believer, so we're all one, we're all believers in Christ? Unless if it's yeah, a different have, spirit but, but, or uh, something. The, sort of the main point the main plan that uh, God wanted to achieve through the conversion of Paul was to send him to Gentiles while Jerusalem was already being evangelized by, by Peter and other apostles. But, but that's, that wouldn't make so, any no, there difference is, there is to... No um, conflict here. I, I, I mean, the, the conflict is that they wouldn't believe in his testimony. Uh, given yeah, his they, history, they, they eventually believed him later. Like, um, I'm not sure it because was not, it they, was not, it was not they, they spill the time to do it. Well, I mean, like it, it's, uh, yeah. it's like asking, well, how come, how come, uh, how come God didn't extend the life of Muhammad for another uh, 30 years? So, so the early Muslims are more united. That there won't be any succession war. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, religi religious people often often say that uh, you know that the ways of God are beyond us, and uh, maybe that was his plan. Maybe that was the best course of action. Uh, uh, there, I mean, there are many places where we can ask this kind of this kind of question either in. Uh, in the Bible or in uh, Islamic history. Mm -hmm. so, but I, I mean, just a, because we can, um, we should still investigate and, you know, try to seek the truth, like... Um, yeah. But in, in terms of um, God, like, Paul prays, like, um, you know, Paul speaks about Jesus in a very high Christology, but when Jesus needs to pray to God he, and direct the disciples to pray to the Father and not to Him, but to direct your prayers, your worship to God. Yeah, he also says that, uh, that you have to honour the Son as you honour the Father. That's more like um, ambassador type language, that when an ambassador is sent to another country, like anyway, he represents. Uh, or... <laughs> about half an hour ago, I wanted to wrap yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Maybe, uh, but it was nice talking to you. How we didn't offend or say anything, or did anything to offend you. Um, but uh, come again. You got my number, so message me. Yeah, um, I enjoy talking to you. Uh, yes. Did you wanted to make a final point or uh, say something? No, really. uh, I mean. It's a nice, friendly conversation for yeah, the most part. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, especially with you. Maybe next time we can speak about Islam, yeah. like the Quran, if you anything like that. So, yeah, cool. Anyway, right. God bless. Bye. Yes, so let me give a concluding statement. A very progressive statement, a very progressive conversation we've had over there with a, a chap who frequents the speaker's corner regularly comes here. So we just went through discussing some of the uh, issues with Paul, how some of the points resonated with the audience, particularly amongst the Christians. Um, so I don't think he's going to change his mind or anything, but he needs to reflect on lots of the points and how it appears Paul is giving a different message in the Gospels compared to the statements you find in the Old Testament and within the New Testament, where clearly it appears that he's giving another law altogether or another message altogether. He's even in conflict with the close associates of Jesus. In, in the meantime, I, I want to let Nizam just make one point and also please subscribe to Nizam's channel. He's the man with, mashallah, a good amount of knowledge. So Nizam44 is his channel. Please subscribe to it. And my one, of course, which is I've opened up recently, it's called Dawa Dad. I'm appealing to people to subscribe to the channel. You get some very useful content, inshallah. Some, add something to it. What would you like to say? Uh, um, we should try to um, be, try our best to be humble in our conversations um, with um, when we're trying to give Dawa. Um, because um, I, I've heard people say, 
um, that your heart is more closer to your mouth than the person that you're speaking to. So Dawa is also meant for yourself. It's also meant as a reminder for yourself. And uh, we should also do Dawa with good intention um, that we're doing it for the sake of God. And we want the other person um, also to be saved. Uh, um, and we also, want, we also wish good for them as well. Um, so we should also seek forgiveness as well from Allah uh, for any mistakes that we make um, knowingly or unknowingly and uh, may God guide us all to the truth. Thank you.